Hello viewers, welcome to this part of the course. Today we are going to talk about the channel models which are used for AM and FM broadcast and block level description of AM transmitters and FM transmitters. To start with, the FM and AM broadcast frequencies are actually in the range of uh, 500 kHz to 1700 kHz for AM broadcast and 88 MHz to 108 MHz for FM broadcast. The channel propagation models are dependent on the frequency of transmission. So, primarily the AM broadcast takes place using either a ground wave propagation or a sky wave propagation and in the case of FM broadcast it is pre predominantly line of sight channel model. So, now we are going to talk about the AM broadcast channel. So, first we start with ground wave propagation. The ground wave propagation is dominated by the frequencies which are of the medium frequency range and this extends from 300 kilohertz to 3 megahertz and this is mainly used for AM broadcasting and maritime radio broadcasting. In the case of AM broadcasting, the range is limited to around 150 kilometers. The second kind of propagation which can also be used for uh, AM broadcast is sky wave propagation. It provides slightly higher range as compared to the ground wave propagation and the phenomena which assist AM broadcast using sky wave propagation is the ionosphere uh, reflection. So, in the case of sky wave propagation, the result, uh, the transmitted signals are being reflected from ionosphere and then they are again reflected from ground and this uh, continuous reflection uh, allows signals to propagate to longer distances. Uh, there is a uh, issue in the transmission in the daytime because uh, due to the higher solar activities at the lower levels of atmosphere ionospheric layers are formed and they absorb most of the frequencies below 2 megahertz. That is why uh, the AM broadcast using sky wave propagation is hindered during the daytime. Whereas, in the case of nighttime hours, the electron density in lower layers of ionosphere decreases sharply, and as a consequence, powerful AM transmissions can be uh, heard at longer distances via sky wave propagation. A frequently occur problem with the sky wave propagation is signal multipath. This signal multipath problem is uh, when transmitted signal arrives from uh, different paths at the receiver and these different paths due to their different phases can combine in phase or out of phase causing constructive or destructive interference. In the case of signals combining in phase, it is constructive interference which is good, but when the signals combine out of phase, there is a destructive interference which causes a phenomena called fading. And uh, for AM signals, then we have to deal with this fading phenomena to uh, overcome the distortions. We have to employ some techniques by which we can have a reception even in the case of fading, deep fade. Apart from this, distortion or uh, interference is from the atmospheric noise and thermal noise. FM broadcast, it is the mainly line of sight uh, propagation which is important and uh, uh, this is because these frequencies are uh, not good for sky wave propagation or ground wave propagation and uh, by the use of line of sight propagation we can use a high uh, antenna at the transmitter and based on the antenna height uh, we can have certain uh, range for communication and if we keep on increasing antenna height this range can be increased to longer distances but due to the physical limitations in terms of antenna height uh, the FM ranges are typically much shorter as compared to AM broadcast ranges. So, what we need to understand in this particular case is that for FM radio broadcast, it is mainly the frequency band of 88 to 108 megahertz which is being used, whereas for television stations, the, transmit, uh, the transmission takes place in VHF and UHF frequency bands and the antenna height required there is much lower as compared to the FM broadcast band. So, uh, for uh, relating the range of line of sight propagation for FM broadcast, there is a formula which gives you uh, the range uh, 
using the height of antenna in meters. So, the formula is like this d is equal to square root of 15 times h where h is the height of transmitting antenna measured in meters and the distance or range of the communication d is measured in kilometers. Now, in this particular formula we have assumed that the receiver is at ground level. If now we assume that receiver is also at a certain height uh, receiver antenna is also having a certain height of h 2 then the range for communication is square root of 15 times h 1 which is the where h 1 is the height of transmitting antenna plus square root of 15 times h 2 where h 2 is the height of receiver antenna and distance is measured in kilometers. So, what we see here is that uh, for most of the radio reception we, we can safely assume that the receiver antenna height is 0, but if suppose we are using uh, another station for repeat re as a repeater then range can be enhanced. So, if we uh, take one example, so for FM transmitter antenna mounted on a tower of uh, around height of 60 meters, we will have a range which is going to be approximately 30 kilometers. This is typically the case for FM range. So, this is what is the city based FM radios what we hear uh, typically have a coverage radius of around 30 kilometers. Now, what we need to also see is that the limiting the dominant noise limiting the performance of communication systems in line of sight propagation is the thermal noise generated by receiver front end and the cosmic noise picked up by the antenna. Now, we start discussion about the transmitters. So, a transmitter must generate a signal with the following criteria. The correct modulation type must have sufficient power to have uh, sufficient signal strength received at the edge of coverage, must generate output at the correct center frequency or the carrier frequency and should be reasonably efficient in terms of uh, power consumption. So, here is the block diagram for AM transmitter. In AM transmitter as we discussed in the case of modulation, we will have two type of modulation techniques which we will talk about. One is low level modulation, another is high level modulation. The basic difference between low level and high level was discussed earlier when we talked about AM modulation techniques. At in the low level modulation what we do is that the modulation takes place at a moderate power level and then modulated signal is passed through a high power amplifier to get enough power for signal transmission. Whereas, in the case of high, high level modulation, the carrier is amplified to the highest power level before modulation and the modulator itself acts as a class C amplifier which gives desired signal power and there is no amplifier required after the modulation. So, there are uh, advantages and limitations of each of these methods which we will talk about today. First, let us start with the block, is block schematic of low level modulation. What we see here is that the audio input is given to audio amplifier and then it is given to modulator driver amplifier. On the other side carrier signal is generated using a crystal oscillator, then there is a buffer amplifier which amplifies signals and then it is uh, the signal is fed to driver amplifier which amplifies it to the required level required for the modulator amplifier which is a class C amplifier. And then what we have is a linear class B power amplifier which amplifies signals to the desired transmit power level and then there is a matching network which is uh, there to match the output of linear class B amplifier to the antenna to minimize the transmission losses. So, uh, audio input uh, for voice and uh, music transmission the source of modulating signal is generally an acoustic transducer such as microphone or magnetic tape a CD disc or a phonograph record. Audio amplifier, audio amplifier is typically a sensitive class A linear amplifier and it has high input impedance. The function of this amplifier is to raise the amplitude of the source signal to a usable level while producing minimum nonlinear distortion and adding as little thermal noise as possible. The modulator driver amplifier's uh, job is to amplify signal, information signal to an adequate level to sufficiently drive the modulator. 
which is basically so that we can achieve uh, a modulation index which is as close to 1 which is the highest modulation level for AM transmission and is the most power efficient mode of transmission. On the RF carrier generated side we use oscillators typically which are crystal controlled oscillator and uh, then the carrier signal is amplified using a buffer amplifier which is a low gain high input impedance linear amplifier. Its function is to isolate oscillator from high power amplifiers and also provide relatively constant load to the oscillator which helps reduce the occurrences and magnitude of short term frequency variations. Then uh, for this particular kind of amplifier typically ammeter followers or integrated circuit op amps are used. Driver amplifier, it is also a linear amplifier and it simply amplifies the carrier signal to an adequate level sufficient to derive the modulator. Now, the modulator for AM low level modulation can either be emitter or collector modulation and the intermediate and final power amplifiers are either linear class A or class B push pull amplifiers. The important part here to note is that the amplifiers are linear whereas, uh, these amplifiers have lower power efficiency which is a drawback or limitation of low level modulations. The antenna coupling network matches the output impedance of the final power amplifier to the transmission line or antenna as is the case, it is uh, wireline communication or wireless communication. So, the low level transmitters are used predominantly for low power low capacity systems such as wireless intercoms, remote control units and pagers. It is mainly due to the lower efficiency of the power amplifier which is used uh, in the circuit. Now, we talk about AM transmitters which are uh, high level modulation AM transmitters. So, in this particular case the block diagram is almost the same as the case of low level modulation except for the fact that the modulator uh, is itself the class C amplifier which amplifies signals to the desired power level and the following network is only antenna matching network which matches the impedance of the output of modulator to the antenna. Now, what we are going to see is that the modulating signal is processed in the same manner as in the low level transmitter except for the use of a power amplifier because now the carrier which is reaching the modulator is amplified to the highest power level correspondingly we also need to mod amplify the modulating signal to higher power levels so that we can achieve uh, a modulation index of 1 or 100 percent modulation and uh, uh, that is the main reason for using use of am power amplifier instead of a driver amplifier for modulating signal and uh, the RF carrier oscillator is similar to what was in the low level modulation and uh, now what we see is that in the case of high level modulation this carrier is amplified to uh, higher power levels prior to modulation stage and this modulator it itself is the final power amplifier. Consequently, so the modulator is generally collector modulated class C amplifier which was discussed already in the case of A modulators. The antenna matching network is generally tuned LC circuit in collector circuit of the modulator amplifier. As a comparison, what we see here is that low level transmitters can produce any kind of modulation AM, FM or PM and require linear class A or B RF amplifiers which reduce DC efficiency and increases production cost. The consequence of this is that we use low level transmitters only for short, short range communications. High level transmitters have better DC efficiency than low level transmitters and are very well suited for battery operations because the DC efficiency is high and they can only be used for generating amplitude modulation. So, now we move to FM transmitter. In case of FM transmitter we again like in the modulation case we discussed two types of uh, modulation circuits one was direct modulation and another was indirect modulation. Similarly, for FM transmitter we have two types of transmitter one we call direct FM transmitter and 
the other one is called indirect FM transmitter. So, it is clear that direct FM transmitters use direct FM modulation and indirect FM transmitters use indirect FM modulation. So, now we are going to talk about the circuit block schematic which is used for direct FM transmitter. This is particularly uh, the transmitter which we are going to discuss today is Crosby direct FM transmitter. This method uh, this name Crosby comes from the stabilization method which is used for giving improving the stability of carrier used for FM transmitter. So, in case of direct transmitter we know that we can use some uh, oscillators which are based on voltage controlled oscillators which are based on some variable capacitance or reactance uh, which allows the frequency of the oscillator to be varied with the modulating signal. As a consequence since these uh, kind of oscillators are reactance modulator oscillators the stability of carrier is not what is required for FM transmission. So, what we need to do is that we need to improve the uh, stability of carrier uh, by using another crystal oscillator and in this particular block diagram we can clearly see that input signal which is passed through first pre emphasis circuit, then th there is a reactance modulator which is being used, then uh, we have buffer, then frequency multiplier then power amplifier, uh, driver amplifier and power amplifier and this signal is transmitted. To improve the stability of carrier what we do is that the frequency multiplied FM modulated signal is fed to a phase detector which also gets input from a crystal oscillator and this phase detector output is low pass filter and fed back to the reactance modulator. This way the resulting FM carrier will have a stability which is logged to the crystal oscillator by whereby improving the stability of the FM transmitter and we can have the deviation which is of a reactance modulator. So, we can achieve a direct FM modulator with required or desired frequency stability. So, if we use a crystal oscillator directly the frequency cannot be varied too much. So, as a trade off we cannot use crystal oscillators for direct FM broadcast because for improving the performance of FM signal against noise and interference we need to have wideband FM signal and uh, uh, then what we need is that we if we want to have a direct FM transmitter we need to use a reactance based modulator and the frequency stability of that need to be controlled by using automatic frequency control circuit which is just now described and uh, in the case of FM transmitters discussed here we use Crosby direct FM transmitter which contains an F AFC loop automatic frequency control loop uh, using uh, VCO and a crystal oscillator. Now, we move to indirect FM transmitter and most of the practical systems which we see today are based on this indirect FM transmitter called Armstrong indirect FM transmitter. In this particular case what we do is that we use a crystal oscillator and first we generate a narrow band FM signal by using a circuit which is uh, derived from the equivalence of narrow band FM and amplitude modulated signal. And what we see here is that there is a crystal oscillator it is given to buffer to isolate it from the a modulating network and then there is a audio frequency input which is given to audio equalizer and then given to valence modulator. The first blocks combining network 90 degree phase shifter and balanced modulator these form the narrow band FM circuit and at the output of combining network we get a narrow band FM signal with the very low carrier frequency FC and uh, low uh, frequency deviation denoted as MF. Now, what we do is that because we understand that for uh, FM signals to give better protection against noise we need to have wide frequency deviation. So, we need to multiply the uh, resulting carrier frequency and frequency deviation. So, what we do is that we um, multiply it by a group of multipliers and then the resulting frequency might be uh, not suitable for transmission. So, we can always bring down the carrier frequency by using a mixer and then if required we can have a second group of multipliers and finally, we use class C power amplifiers. Here we can recall 
that uh, use of class C amplifier which are non-linear amplifiers is not a problem for FM modulator because uh, we had seen earlier that FM and PM modulations are immune to non-linear distortions. Here we again summarize what is the FM transmitter for Armstrong indirect method of frequency modulation. Uh, we use a crystal oscillator that cannot be frequen successfully frequency modulated for wideband uh, frequency deviation. So, what we do is that we use uh, the method by using indirect modulation where we first generate using crystal oscillator a narrow band signal and then we use multipliers to achieve the desired frequency deviation. Typically, the con most convenient operating frequency for crystal oscillator and the modulator is in the, is in the vicinity of 1 megahertz and then we multiply using frequency multipliers to achieve desired fr carrier frequency for FM transmission and desired frequency deviation. So, today uh, we talked about the propagation models used for AM and FM broadcasting. We talked about different propagation models using ground wave propagation, sky wave propagation and line of sight propagation and the related sources of distortion and the constraints. We also studied AM and FM transmitters. What we concluded is that from the DC efficiency point of view, high level AM transmitters are better than low level AM transmitter and that is why for long range AM broadcast, we generally prefer high level modulators whereas, for short distance we can also use low level transmitters. From the frequency standpoint, uh, frequency stability point of view, indirect FM transmitters are much better than direct FM transmitters and that is the reason why most of the commercial FM transmissions are based on indirect FM transmissions. Also, we have to note here that low level FM transmission like uh, low level amplitude transmitter do, do not suffer from DC efficiency because the FM transmission signals are immune to uh, nonlinear distortions. Thank you. Hope you enjoyed today's lecture.